the gay brain. The World Health Organization, WHO, categorized homosexuality as a mental disorder until 1990, when the term was declassified. To mark this historic change, March 17th is considered the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia. We have seen homosexuality occur in an abundance of beasts, yet animals often behave in ways humans do not. Let's examine Homo sapiens, a species known for its innate need to understand through categorization. Despite subsequent efforts to explain homosexuality, scientists have failed to find a gay gene. In fact, the 2019 large-scale study published in AAAS's American Association for the Advancement of Science, Science Journal, affirmed that there is no conclusive gay gene. While we may attribute up to 25% of non-heterosexual behaviors to genetics, a whopping 75% is determined by environmental factors. Hearsay suggests hormonal imbalances are responsible for sexual variation, but those studies have proved somewhat fruitless. Social psychologists like Daryl Bem have hypothesized that sexual orientation is determined indirectly by biology, but mainly originates from childhood experiences. He goes on to say that temperament and interest in gender-conforming or non-gender-conforming activities can influence a child's orientation as an adult. This belief alludes to the theory that sexuality is based on an individual's environment. Sparking controversy, his theories have been misunderstood by some, blaming parents and suggesting sexuality as a habit that can be trained in and out of an individual. British-American neuroscientist Simon LeVay published the 1991 article, A Difference in Hypothalamic Structure Between Heterosexual and Homosexual Men, which revealed key differences between heterosexual and homosexual brains. The third interstitial nucleus of the anterior hypothalamus, INAH3, is the sexually dimorphic nucleus, SDN, of the brain. Put shortly, it is a nest of cells associated with sexuality. The SDN was proven to be almost twice as large in heterosexual men than in homosexual and heterosexual female brains. LaVey accounted, this finding indicates that INAH is dimorphic with sexual orientation, at least in men, and suggests that sexual orientation has a biological substrate. LaVey's work has been severely criticized by his colleagues, mainly because some of the brains used were from people who died of diseases. However, LaVey urges the understanding of his findings and states, it's important to stress what I didn't find. I did not prove that homosexuality is genetic or find a genetic cause for being gay. I didn't show that gay men are born that way, the most common mistake people make in interpreting my work. Nor did I locate a gay center in the brain. The INAH3, is less likely to be the sole gay nucleus of the brain than part of a chain of nuclei engaged in men and women's sexual behavior. Research has also followed the differences in size of the INAH3 in direct relation to sexual activity in animals as well. Monkeys, rats, and otters have been known to behave according to the size of their SDN. Female-oriented rams, for example, tend to have an SDN nearly twice as large as male-oriented rams, which is similar when compared to humans. Here's food for thought. I always imagined it was more challenging for males to dominate other males, rather than the weaker sex. In some ways, does this make me more of a man? In 1992, 90 postmortem brains were examined by Laura Allen and Roger Gorski of UCLA. Within this collection of 30 heterosexual men, 30 heterosexual women, and 30 homosexual men, it was found that all three brains had many differences, most notably the size of the anterior commissure. The anterior commissure is a knot of nerve fibers that connects the left and right hemispheres of the brain. It joins the two amygdalae, which are partially responsible for the recognition of facial expressions, tones of voice, and body language. Amygdalae are said to be more active in gay men, especially when sexual stimulation is introduced. The left and right temporal lobes are also connected by the structure. They contribute to the placement of meaningfulness, decision-making, 
and processing sensory input. Together, this system combined with the amygdala enhances memory, instinct, intuition, emotion, speech, hearing, and sexual behavior. Based on the studies of Alan and Gorski, homosexual males have an anterior commissure that is 18% larger than that of heterosexual women and 34% larger than the ones found in heterosexual male brains. Extra connections help process the value of meaning on the outside world, or what I like to call gaydar. Similarly, Swedish scientist Ivanka Sabic and Per Lindstrom revealed in 2008 that heterosexual men have a larger right hemisphere, while in women, both sides of the brain were relatively equal. The homosexual male brain was closer, in relation to size, to the heterosexual woman's brain. Homosexual women had brains that were fashioned more like heterosexual male brains. There are, of course, studies that challenge these theories. There is still much debate that surrounds the naturalness of sexuality, and not enough study is conducted. The big question has always been, the brains of gay men are different or feminized, as earlier research suggests, then is it just limited to sexual preference? Or are there other regions that are gender atypical in gay males? As Dr. Eric Villain, professor of human genetics at the University of California, Los Angeles. For the first time in this study, it looks like there are regions of the brain not directly involved in sexuality that seem to be feminized in gay males.